Welcome to my channel. I'm Dan the Wolfman, and I've been on a true lifelong martial arts journey, and I adventured around the world, but I was once young like everybody else. I got my first black belt in Taekwondo, and then Daido Juko Kudo in Japan. My third in Hayastan grappling system from Gokar Shevichian and Judo Jean LaBelle, and finally in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, though I'm known more as a catch wrestler. I trained with Legends Dan Severn, Tito Ortiz, Rampage Jackson, Kazuji Sakuraba, even rolled with Joe Rogan two years. I uh, sparred Theodore Machida and Roger Gracie, messed around with Anderson Silva, Fabricio Verdum, rolled with Cheo Sanan, but I worked as an actor and stuntman in shows like Sons of Anarchy, Real Steel, Couples Retreat, NCIS, CSI New York, and The Passage. You can even see me in Cobra Kai and Jumanji. I've lived, trained, and taught in Japan, Thailand, Egypt, and Malaysia. I fought professionally in mixed martial arts and did a bunch of grappling tournaments. I even did pro wrestling in All Japan Pro Wrestling and commentated Pancrase Live on UFC Fight Pass. I work in armed security and I've been through SWAT school. So if you want to learn how to fight like John Wick and shoot like him too, subscribe and get my combatives and street jujitsu instructional on BJJ Fanatics. Thanks. Hi everybody. Hopefully you've watched my breakdowns of episode one and episode two. I think there's a lot of things to learn from all their mistake, mistakes and some things that they did right. And that's the reason I'm doing this because everyone has bugged me to break them down. So here we go with episode three, hide it and go stab. And they're going to be put into a building with guys chasing them with knives. And this is the kind of thing that absolutely could happen. There can be an active stabber in the area, uh, someone running over people with a truck they rented, or, uh, you know, an active shooter. So these things could definitely happen and are things you need to think about. When you go into locations, pay attention to where the exits are. Uh, get in the habit of doing that. With the restaurant, sitting with your, uh, not with your back to the door, but facing the door and the cash register. Um, looking when you go to a movie theater, make a note of where all the exits are. There could be a fire. That should be an ingrained daily habit. And so these things can definitely be important. They're going to break into two teams, each of three, and have six guys following them broken into teams of two each. So that's important right there. Do some math, ask some questions before you do this. Well, wait a minute. If there's three of us, uh, what different entrances are they allowed to use? And so the best thing to do is to work as a team and try and overcome the attacker. That's the best way to save the most amount of lives. And this is serious material. So um, things that you can do is like barricade doors, uh, have someone off 90 degrees to the right or left of the door, depending on where it opens, be all hidden in a corner, throwing stuff at the person as they come through a door in order to distract them as the largest football player, wrestler, rugby player, etc., cetera, uh, willing to hype up and tackle them as they come through the door. Things to that effect. So all of these things can be very important. Uh, you got to stand up and take charge right away if you're ever in such an event and get people willing to make a plan and stick to it. And guys made plans here and nobody stuck to it. So you got Mike running and Rokas Leo's running out of time and he decides to hide in the bathroom. Uh, so he thinks it's dark and he's going to go run in there. Now I've done some you know, searching as well as hiding bad guy role playing when I went through most of SWAT school. And I also used to do uh, stuff at Splatball City, which was an empty, dangerous warehouse doing paintball back when I was young. So I've done some of this type of stuff before. And he's hiding in the dark, which is good, but you'll find a fatal flaw in his uh, logic here. So I commend Rokas on pulling this off. Unfortunately, Rokas, even though I've warned him not to, continually talks crap behind my back, responds to people online where he thinks I won't see it, uh, and is rude to me, and he's been rude to some older Aikido guys and whatnot, and I am not very happy with him for doing that, and I've warned him not to. And remember, he now claims to be a fighter and a lion. Oh, boy. Oh, my. 
he's a lion now. But anyway, good job at putting this together, Rokus, and your editing. I wonder if everything is really fair. And he's hiding there in the bathroom. So again, guys, they should have stuck together as a team and figured out what to do. And if you know that the attackers are armed not with firearms, but with like a knife, as in here, you would want someone to be able to hide and attempt to sneak behind them to put in a rear naked choke as the other person then comes out to entangle the legs wherever they end up standing around the ground in like a double leg wrap around the legs. And the third person should be getting a weapon hand control. So those are the three roles. Who can hide best to sneak behind them and put in a rear naked choke? Who is best at being big, strong, tying up legs and like a double leg to wrap up the legs. So they found Rokus because you'd know it's not dark when they turn the lights on, something he should have tested. So Rokus died. And now we got uh, Mr. Adams. I'm not sure if I will call him Sensei, but Mr. Adams working with AC Troll, the world's fakest kickboxing instructor in the world. And uh, those guys are buddy buddies, so they can hide together and do stuff. And there's even running to the second floor. So I think they got five minutes to run and go hide. Then the attackers get five minutes to go in there and try and stab them. And then that end of the five minute bell dings. Then they're able to escape out four doors and try to run a safety to a tree there to the left. Oh, but someone was hiding around the corner. And chasing him, he skins his knee and gets a little boo-boo. Actually, the bigger boo-boo could have been there from that water uh, faucet there. He tumbles, and the guy runs past him. Of course, that was pre-planned ninjutsu on his plan. And please, God, if you believe me, stop watching right now. You're hopeless. Keep following the guys that suck. Anyway, so um, squares up with the guy. Talks about fear, and this is make-believe knife, but then he said he was going to engage and then ran away, which is pretty funny uh, because that could very well be true. And here he uh, his hands are up, ready to go, and he gets stabbed in the gut with the solar plexus twice, it looks like there. Gets baseball bat control and then gives up, mostly due to fatigue, which is something we've talked about in the other episodes with uh, he does good in the beginning and then gets adrenal dubs. And doesn't know how to deal with it. And if you quit, you die. And he bleeds out and dies. Right there. Easy to Hurt is up now. Easy to Hurt was working with Seth where they were distracting each other and throwing bottles to get them to run out. But then they decided to stay in the uh, stand area there where Mike was hiding. And Kuksu Wan or Kempo, either one, plus boxing gloves with her friends, does not make you a kickboxing coach. Doing everything wrong does not make you a coach. Pretending to coach Gabriel Varga does not make you a friggin' coach. Pretending to coach someone who just whipped your ass in the second round, Blackie Chan, does not make you a coach. Watching videos on YouTube and teaching other people's techniques in totally incorrectly and not giving them credit does not make you a coach. It makes you a fraud that deserves to get his little troll ass beat and you're lucky you're not bigger. I said it. You want to do something about it? So his ass runs as best as his little legs can do and everyone's, oh my God, you did a flying sidekick. Well, yeah, okay. Kuksuwan. Ooh, ooh. And then he dies just before he gets to the Tree of Woe. Giving blood to the roots that it so desperately seeks. And now we do a flashback in time to what actually was the first day challenge. wasn't the bus bash. It was Sumo at the beach. And so... Here, Rokus goes, oh yeah, staying on your feet is very important. And you know, multiple attacker fights. Something I pointed out, uh, maybe by the time he edited, 
my uh, breakdown of episode one on the bus where people laid on their backs and, you know, didn't stand up and hold on and make sure they had a good strong base and throw punches to the face. Standing and throwing punches to the face might be a good way of winning a fight. I'm just saying that ancient stand up and throw hands punch face technique is a very, very ancient secret of fighting. So now Seth is talking about all the protein bars he likes to eat. And um, Ramsey gets to make excuses about being tired. It's true. I could tell he was jet lagged, whatever. I didn't know Ramsey had the bad C-1984 flu, uh, you know, the, the engineered flu. I didn't know he had had that. And he did lose a lot, a lot of weight. So some of his excuses are valid. Um, AC Mike does completely untactical decision making and does something stupid yet again. Ooh, big surprise here. Not someone that should be teaching self defense to everybody. Let me run in the middle. And then Rokas, being the backstabber, I mean, the back pusher that he is, uh, pushes them out of bounds. Clinton says, I'm going to hold on and take you with me and tries the lateral drop there. And they both go out of bounds. Uh, Matt seems like a cool guy. I don't know. I'll give him. I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. Clinton could be a cool guy, but his back touched the mat first or the sand first. So if you have any doubt who's going to win this, guys, who do you think might win? Come on, be logical, people. Who do you think might win in the San Pit Sumo test? And now everyone's leaving Ramsey alone. Ramsey should have crossed body checked all three out right now. Yeah, Rocas Leon Davesius falls down. And now Seth, always being a sneaky bastard that he is, says, let's team up on the little guy and gets Jeff out. Whoa, Seth, I don't know. I don't know. And now we see some entire cheer push our hands from Ramsey Dewey. Uh, 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 uh. May the Kung Fu nerds rejoice. Man, he's got such a beautiful, soothing voice, Ramsey. Ramsey, the offer is there to come on Viking Samurai's channel, make up with Dan the Wolfman, and talk about how it sucks to have all these injuries and whatnot. And the guy that's actually come second place in a sumo tournament, the largest guy who's also gotten second place in a sumo tournament, wins the sumo challenge. What a surprise. Good job, Seth. I, I you know, I have Seth's videos are fairly entertaining. I liked his sambo, his sistema, and his sumo videos that I've watched. I will give Seth that. The guy's growing on me a little bit. Maybe now that he stopped acting like an es expert and decided to, like, let people share in the experience of going around the world. I mean, I did that, but cell phones didn't have good video cameras when I did all that kind of stuff. So uh, maybe that's where Seth comes in. And now they talk about making a plan. Hey, uh, uh, Jeff's going to stick in a rear naked choke and one go for the weapon arm. And they make this great plan, and then everybody bailed. I don't know. Is Ramsey being truthful here? Can I take it that Jeff... Thought his quicker speed and run few. Did Jeff, did Jeff sneakily, was he the first to run away on those guys? Somehow I'm, I'm kind of thinking so. And then they look around and fall apart. Uh, I do like Jeff who puts on this event. But yeah, there definitely should have been rules. No climbing up uh, to, you know, third story levels. Uh, things that dangerously could get people killed, you know. Someone gets a little boo-boo, even a broken bone. I don't really care. Uh, but, um, you know, people falling to their death and things. Like when I played Splatball City, there used to be rusty nails sticking out of the wall and stuff. And there definitely was a couple locations where people could have fell to their death, where people were crossing boards to go to this and all that. So, um, yeah, I mean, anyway. They, Jeff's doing Nike Foo, and Nike Foo's a perfectly good defense against a knife. It is. If you're cornered, you need to know my techniques, techniques other people teach, uh, the dog catcher or jaws or Quan Sao technique uh, against a right-handed attacker. Most attacks are going to be an angle one style attack. And uh, I played those that video at the end of episode two while I was discussing what people did good and bad. You need to go back and watch it. Uh, I think it's Jeff finally gets cornered. 
looks like you got a bit of a two on one uh, baseball bat there, and uh, he got stabbed. So they must have re pumped that sewing machine stab at him after that, and Jeff died. So even a pro MMA fighter with fast attributes can die versus guys with knife. Even a grandmother with a knife with dementia will absolutely kill you with a steak knife. So you have to learn Nike Foo and tactics and footwork, but you also got to learn how to enter with that dog catcher or Quan Sao and pass to a Russian two-on-one, and you got to learn baseball pat position because it happens so often and some other techniques that I teach. Look at my best a knife defense video on all of YouTube. And so here, Clayton's climbing up, 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 way up high, which is not so awesome. They're chasing him with knives. He's like, I can kick you. And then he starts swearing, get the F down. I like where his mentality work. If you can make an attacker scared, maybe by swinging a stick you picked up, an uh, uh, improvised weapon, uh, which I've done before, you, you find some kind of stick. Uh, maybe a broom handle or something like that. Um, it says, I will theoretically kick you in the face, which should probably become a t-shirt, just like my making Kodagishi great again should become a t-shirt. So maybe Matt Clinton, I will theoretically kick you in the face. I, I'm, I'm down for that shirt. I should probably get on that. Um, so that should have been outlawed in the first place, should have been known, guys, we don't go up past this level, or don't go to such and such areas, uh, they, luckily, obviously, Clinton's level-headed dude, and, uh, things could get carried away, though, so you don't try this at home, kids, and, um, you know, anyway, be safe, uh, so there's Jeff's flying little kick, and, yeah, that can work, and, um, all that Clinton, I think, kind of deserved like a half point or something here. Like eventually, he had to give up that spot, and one got cornered and killed. But um, Clinton, you know, theoretically, with theoretical kicks to the head, if a guy climbing up, and he hopefully you got shoes on where you don't get stabbed directly through the foot. Like if you're lucky enough to have boots on or something. Uh, but stomping on the guy when you're down, you know, when you're above him, <clears throat> having high ground could work. So. Pretty good there. All right, and now they're finding Ramsey Dewey running away. Uh-huh, uh-huh. The 44-year-old legs don't run like a 24-year-old's legs. And, uh, oh, he did take off the sweatshirt. Like, he deserves a half point for this, too, being able to improvise that. And he did tie up that guy's knife hand, it looked like. And he circled out a bit and broke off. And so that was good. But then he gave his back and got stab, stab, stabby, stab on the ground, stab, 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 more stab. So if you're going to hold your ground, hold your ground, hold your ground and then run sprint, but know when it's time to turn back around and try and hit that dog catcher jaws, Quan Sao entry against most attacks, unless it's like an overhead stab, and then you can even change it to that. Unless it happens to be a left-handed and then you'll probably do something else. Uh, but you got to know how to go back into the attack. And so in the next episode, after a couple weeks for Rocas Leo to edit, you're going to get a zombie attack. I don't think the points are going to count, but you do uh, get to see some zombie attack fun, and that, that's cool too. And I'm down with seeing that. This has all been very entertaining. Uh, but until then, hopefully you've enjoyed this breakdown. And now let's look at some of my random gun defense. Okay, attack me with a gun. And no, it's not shooting. I was going to eventually get to that, uh, what I could with Airsoft. Um, but, you know, I've used some munitions before, and here we go with the random style attacks. Uh, now, I was going to do the knife, but we did the knife at the end of Episode 2 Breakdown, which you should watch to learn from my footage. Go back, we watch that. And really, we can learn a lot from these breakdowns, what people did good and what they did bad, how you can plan, how you need to work with people if you're ever in a horrible situation. Uh, hopefully, you're carrying a gun. Hopefully, you live to a free country in a free state. And there are some countries around the world where, yeah, you can carry a gun if you go through the proper stuff you're supposed to do and all that. Uh, yeah, you absolutely should, of course, because defending good people's lives, your own and those around you, is the most important thing being good to others, not talking crap and pretending to fool everyone online that you're a good person when you're really not and you're rude to elders. Um, you know, or you fake kids to sell O-lights and body armor when you're not a fucking kickboxing coach or self-defense expert. And I, I think you're showing the world that.
so yes, disarming knife and other weapons can be very, very difficult. Disarming pistols can be very difficult. If you're a beginner martial artist, maybe you shouldn't do it. But even untrained people have done it many, many times on video. You can watch that on active self-protection and whatnot. It's just about leverage and dedication. Don't fight halfway when you, you either are compliant or you fight 100%, as I talked about in the last video. So look at how I use leverage to strip the weapon and get away. The difference is you can find a lot of like Krav Maga, Krav Maga instructors and whatnot, and they'll be like, attack me this way. You don't get to decide spatial relationships and which way someone's going to attack you or what the situation is. So very few people will just film like I do, random knife defense, random gun defense, you know, just attack me different ways. Uh, and that's what really shows the skill. And even if occasionally something isn't like, well, you're not supposed to do it this way or that way or whatever. If you show dedication and you move quickly, I have stripped a pistol out of someone's hand live once. I have Kodagishied a knife out of someone's hand once. Now, when they were actively trying to stab me, but when they started playing with it next to me, um, I have been on two on one stick attack. Uh, I had another guy pull a knife on me in the Middle East. Um, you know, so uh, I've survived quite a few situations. Um, so, to, oh, that will never work. Don't be one of those guys because your ass could never make anything work because you're untrained or you're trained so lowly like some of these guys online that have never had any self-defense situations to talk about being in a self-defense championship. And yet they badmouth other martial artists. They badmouth styles completely. And they're really really poorly skilled. Hopefully you see, but you got people like Mike who make an excuse for why he's upside down with his head low twice on a bus where he'd get stomped and stabbed. He makes an excuse. The guy was bigger. That's why he rolled me over. No asshole. If you release a blue belt in jujitsu, you would be sitting down on your heels and your head would be low. Your head wouldn't be way up high. And you're faking all these kids online with your complete and utter bullshit all the time. And so, guys, I hope you subscribe and look through my playlist. I've uh, put a lot out there over the years when I was a bit younger. Look at my playlist. Go down a lot of rabbit holes. All kinds of aspects of martial arts. But if you want to learn how to defend yourself, the best way, besides finding some good places to train at, is get my four and a half hour long, highly rated combatives and street jujitsu instructional on BJJ Fanatics. Out of all their self defense instructionals, I think I by far have the most highest ratings 20 so far on BJJ Fanatics, eight five stars so far on effective self-defense. So I really teach you everything that I think is essential to know in unarmed fighting. And I even show how to do that Quan Sao dog catcher against like a uh, knife slash attack or a stab attack or a one attack. And anyway, I want everyone to train and be safe, protect yourself and those around you. I badmouth the ones that are low level that are badmouthing others. Okay, like they badmouth Master Wong. Master Wong's very athletic and in shape for his size, has very quick attributes. I believe Master Wong could defend himself with Wing Chun. I'm not the biggest guy that's high on Wing Chun or Kido's functionality, but a guy really skilled with attributes like Master Wong could defend himself pretty good. Now, does it give you an excuse to make fun of really bad re-naked choke defense? Yeah, probably, but you shouldn't badmouth the guy forever when he's a more skilled martial artist than really what these people are showing.